All right, welcome back. It is the Vegas Take Sherp and Shapiro. So glad you could join us on a Tuesday. Coming at you live. You know, we had Congresswoman Dina Titus on uh, last hour, and I asked her, geez, when do you think these casinos will reopen? She doesn't know for sure. Uh, she gave a date of July 4th just because that would be, you know, the biggest next date, you know, to, to open things up. But she doesn't know. Uh, I don't think anybody knows for sure right now when these casinos are going to open up. Certainly some of these casinos have their, their dates set where they're taking reservations, but they don't know either because this happened back in April. And, you know, uh, some great local casinos here in Las Vegas. In fact, I prefer the local quote-unquote casinos over some of those bigger casinos on the Strip. And boy, gaming does a great job. I, I certainly uh, have made some donations to some of their casinos on the casino floor. There's no question about that, but I enjoy their casinos. And the vice president of corporate communications for Boyd Gaming is joining us right now on the line. He is David Stroh. David, thank you so much for joining us. How are you? I'm doing well, and I appreciate your uh, your donations. To the <laughs> you know what? You guys comp really well. I will say that. You go into one of your Boyd properties, and you, and you dump some money. It could be a few hundred dollars, whatever it is. I've never, No one's ever said no to me to get a comp, whether it's a restaurant or a buffet. People there are always very nice. Uh, so I want to certainly commend you guys for that. All right, let me start with the billion-dollar question, so to speak. And I don't know if you'll have an answer for me on this L- or not. Literally the billion-dollar question. Let, let's literally. go with this. Do you have any sense at all, David, of when your casinos will be allowed to reopen? Well, I think you said it best, which is nobody really knows, and certainly we don't have any particular insight to that uh, either. I mean, certainly we are very eager to get back to business. Um, We will be ready to go when we get the green light from the state of Nevada. But at the moment, unfortunately, I don't really have any great insight that I could offer that anyone else does. Is it is it the gaming commission that would give you the authority to do that, or is it the governor? No, no. We we were waiting for uh, the gaming control board will ultimately give us the direction on when we can proceed. Right, and and, and I was under the impression there's there's been t- several conversations that the governor has given the the when the timeline to the gaming control board to make that to make that decision. Is is that true? Uh, again, that that would be something you would have to ask the gaming control board. Certainly, we are not aware of a particular timeline just yet but sure. as i noted earlier you know we want to get open you know obviously our our uh, our employees want to get back to work our customers want to come back and when we get that green light we will be ready to go but at the moment like everyone else in our business we are definitely in a holding pattern have they told you at all how much time they're going to give you to reopen like for well, example yeah go ahead just, yeah, we anticipate we'll get some advance notice. You know, uh, I couldn't tell you precisely how much that will be, but there will be some advance notice before we go. I don't think this will be a case where we find out one day and and folks are opening their doors 24 hours later. I think that's the expectation is there will be some advance sure. notice of this. Fair enough. And one of the main reasons why I wanted to have you come on, David, is because you guys have this reopening plan for Vegas, and I wanted you to talk a little bit about that, this Boyd Clean Reopening Plan. Can you explain to us what exactly this is uh, and, you know, in, in anticipation of reopening uh, seven properties, uh, I believe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, in Louisiana and Mississippi, and how this will also apply to Las Vegas? Yeah, so this, this will be a national plan. This isn't a Louisiana plan, a Mississippi plan, or a Nevada plan, but this is a nationwide plan. And I think it's a reflection of where we are today uh, with everything that's happened over the last several months. When we get the doors back open, the single most important thing that we can do as a company is make sure that we are doing everything we can to keep our customers safe and to keep our employees safe when they come in the door. That And, and really, that's what they're going to be looking for us to do uh, for a lot of folks to be comfortable coming back. And so we get that. And so that's why we've been working for the last month or so on this um, this detailed protocol that we're called Boy Clean. And so there are a lot of different elements to this. There's uh, enhanced cleaning. So you'll have folks wiping down the slot machines on a regular basis. You'll have people wiping down table games, chairs, elevator buttons, door handles, any place where there's there's the uh, likelihood for touching uh, on a frequent basis, we're going to be cleaning that. When you come in the door, you will be encouraged, highly encouraged, to wear a mask in our casinos. And if you don't have one, we will provide you with one. But that is a uh, proven uh, recommended method for uh, preventing the spread of COVID-19, and we're going to encourage our, our guests to wear those masks, and we will make sure that every one of our employees is wearing a mask. Is that going to have to happen? 
It, it, you say you I'm recommend sorry. it. Is, yeah. Is that is that? Will uh, you have to wear a mask to gamble? Required. Yeah, it's required for for team members. That will be mandated. Every team member will be required to wear a face mask. When it comes to the customers, we will highly encourage it. It will not be mandated, but it will be highly encouraged. And we hope that a a lot of customers. Uh, we'll appreciate the importance of wearing these. And as I noted, if, if you need one, we will give you one. We'll be happy to give you one. But it is something that I think that everyone can do in the community to help prevent the spread of this virus. And to, to tail on to that, the, uh, just the, the sanitation element of this, are you going to have in, in hotel rooms, are you going to have like sanitation packets or like a, a, when, so, when someone checks in to, to, to get a hotel room, are they going to get some type of sanitation uh, I don't know, like like a like a gift bag almost when, when they when they check in. <laughs> well, we will certainly provide PPE, so that you know, in terms in terms of a face mask, as I noted, if you need a face mask, we'll provide one to you, and we will have hand sanitizer throughout our property. So, as you walk through a property of ours, once it's open, you will have no problem finding a hand sanitizer station because we want make those very yep. easy to find. Sure. Um, and when our uh, when our um, housekeepers go through those rooms, they are going through it with a fine tooth comb. So they are sanitizing everything that uh, might be a high touch surface that needs to be cleaned. So that could include things like a television remote, a telephone, a thermostat, anything like that that's been touched. Our housekeepers are going to thoroughly sanitize that to make sure that our guests are are safe when they uh, are in sure. our hotel rooms. So I, I, I was reading up on a, on a casino just outside of San Diego that opened up yesterday, and mm-hmm. their guidelines are no more than three people to a gaming table. They're turning off every other casino slot machine. Uh, craps table, you're not going to have any more than several people. Uh, I believe they're going to have dividers on the tables and, and, you're, and people wearing masks, as, as you mentioned. Is that uh, kind of similar to what you guys plan on doing? Can you give us the future? For example, if you were able to open up next week, what would those gaming tables and slot machines look like, and what do you have in place for that? No, Ed, that is absolutely coming to Las Vegas, and I think that folks should expect that will happen, not only at Avoid Properties, because we certainly will be enforcing that, but everywhere in the industry. So there will be uh, limits on the number of slot machines that we run. So we will be... Uh, either turning off machines or removing chairs so that two people cannot sit next to each other when they are playing slot machines. So there will be social distancing on the slot rollers. When it comes to table games, depending on the game you're playing, there will be a maximum of three or four players who can be at that. If you're at a craps table, you're only talking about three to a side. So social distancing is obviously very important, and that's going to make the uh, casino experience different than than what we're accustomed to we don't need we don't want people to be crowded on top of each other it is going to be different um, what about poker because well, uh, I, I, I hope I, that I, folks hmm? i'm sorry to interrupt you i was just going to say what about uh like a poker table would you guys even run poker room uh, the poker room in your place yeah we're taking a look at that as well it will but it again would be more limited seating than you typically see you're not going to see 10 player games anymore that or at least not for the time being because you can't enforce proper social distancing with that many players at the table. Now, you know, again, we understand it's going to be different, but we hope that folks understand why. It is, it's, it's what is necessary to ensure the health and safety of everybody at the property. Um, and so it's just what we're going to have to do for the time being, but it is important, and that's why we will be doing it. So gaming to Nevada is more important than any other state in the United States. and it, it, it basically accounts for about 40% of sales tax revenue. Right now you have 82 casinos open across seven states, and, and this week you're opening up Louisiana, Mississippi. South Dakota has casinos open. Washington has casinos open, as does Arizona, and, and soon to be, I, I believe, San Diego opened yesterday. Why do you think that Nevada, despite the fact that the economy needs it more than any other state in the country, has waited this long to open casinos? I couldn't begin to speculate. Um, I think that from our perspective, we understand the importance of why we had to shut down. I mean, we get that. That that was something that had to occur. Um, it was obviously painful for our company. It was, it was for pretty much every person and every business in the state, but we understand it. It helped bring uh, COVID-19 under control. It helped flatten the curve. And so we get that. Um, look, in terms of reopening, the state will reopen when they deem it uh, when they deem it time to do so. All we can do is provide them with our plans to reopen safely. We will certainly do that. 
um, and we'll be ready to go when those doors are open. But we do think this is something that is now moving forward. We anticipate yeah. we're going to see um, our other states, including Nevada, reopening over the next few weeks. So that is something that, that you know we're optimistic that will happen and that we can get to business before too much longer. To, to answer J.D.'s point, and again, this is just my opinion, I, I believe that the Las Vegas Strip is very unique in itself, and most of these other casinos won't have hundreds of thousands of people flocking to their casinos. I think Las Vegas is very unique in a sense that at times you have hundreds of thousands of people, if not millions of people, in small quarters. And I think that's what makes the Las Vegas Strip very different than a lot of your other casinos throughout the country. Would you agree with that? No, I would agree with that. And and I think, look, as a company, we're positioned a lot differently than the Strip. Uh, as right. you noted, we operate local places exactly. in Las Vegas. So these are much – these are smaller footprints. They're different amenities, and we rely on a different kind of customer. We're relying on a local customer, people who live here and come to our properties uh, from home. They just drive from home and they go back home. We're not reliant or as reliant – on out-of-town tours and business. We do some of it, I mean, especially at a property like the Orleans, but right. our primary customer base, both here in Las Vegas and around the country, is predominantly a local customer. And we're pretty confident that that's going to be the kind of business that starts to recover first. And so as we approach reopening, you know, we're cautiously optimistic. I mean, obviously, this has been a heck of a time for our country, but we think we are well-positioned. Uh, to start recovering um, pretty quickly. All right, David, two questions for you. One, do you know what that split is between uh, tourism business and local business as far as your re the, the revenue streams? And, and the second one, have it really any... Would, it would really would depend on property. A property like the Orleans is obviously going to be much more uh, tourism-driven because of its proximity to the Strip than a property like the Sun Coast would be. Um, but I can tell you that uh, across Las Vegas, the majority of our revenue is coming from a local customer. And do you have any Boyd properties that are going to have to be permanently closed because of this pandemic? We have not uh, announced any uh, plans to permanently close any properties at this point. He is David Stroh, the Vice President of Corporate Communications for Boyd Gaming. Uh, David, I guess I have sort of a gaming question for you. As you know, a lot of locals, they love their free play at your casinos and, and uh, you know, free comps, restaurants. So a lot of people have asked me, a number of people have said, geez, I wonder how they're going to handle these comps. You know, for the month of April and May, I was getting 50 bucks a week in slot free play. So how have you guys discussed that at all? And is it going to be, how is that going to happen? Like when you guys do reopen, is that person going to get all that slot play and that free play? How's that going to work? Yeah, I mean, obviously, we 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 uh, we got that message. I mean, obviously, if you can't get them into the casinos, you can't redeem these offers that you were getting, and you can't uh, earn these offers. And so, we're going to make adjustments to the Be Connected program. So, when folks come in, a they're going to stay on track to stay at their current tier level. They're not going to lose Good. ground if they have an Emerald card or an Onyx card. They're going to stay on track for that. They're not going to be penalized for the last couple of months. And any offers that they had in their account, whether it be if it's a comp, we will reissue it. If it expired, we'll reissue a similar comp to them. If they had points that were going to expire, they aren't going to expire while we're closed. So we want to make sure that folks keep whole while we're closed and, and are ready to come back when we're open. Good. I'm glad to hear that. I guess this would be my last question for you, David. I mean, is there any Anything that you want to convey to the people here in Las Vegas, those, uh, well, really across the country, but particularly here in Las Vegas that frequent your casinos all the time, what is the message that you would like to share with them? Well, what I would share with them is we're very much looking forward to having you back, and but understand that when we welcome you back, we're going to be doing everything we can to keep you safe. That's important to us. We know that a lot of folks are wondering about that. And I would encourage them to take a look at our website, to take a look at the Boyd Clean program and see what we're doing, because that is very important to us. We are going to do what we can to keep you safe while you're with us. That is important to us, and we're going to be committed to that. Glad to hear that. David, you guys are doing a great job, and I really do appreciate you taking the time to come on and explain some of these really important uh, issues with us. So thanks so much, David. We appreciate you. And I look forward to playing a little bit of poker at the Orleans sometime soon down the road. I love the Orleans. It's one of my favorite local casinos in Las Vegas. It literally has everything from, you know, the, the great restaurants to the movie theater to the great poker room. So uh, hope you back are up again, back again soon, my friend. And thanks so much for your time. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. All right. Yeah, thanks go. a lot, David. That is David Stroh, the Vice President of Corporate Communications at Boyd Gaming, a big-time job there. And it seems